Well, before I ask you what you're afraid of, let me tell you what I'm afraid of. I'm not really a big fan of heights. It's a lot more comfortable down here. And that's what we want in life, isn't it? We want to be comfortable. But the problem with that is that that doesn't mean that we grow. So one of the things I did to face my fear is that I went to the Excite at Brayhead and what I did was had a go on the climbing frame that's 15 meters up from the ground. And let me tell you, there's all these kids who are doing it and they're thinking nothing on it, of it. They're really happy, really excited. And uh, at one point the staff members actually sort of said to me, are you okay? You look a bit green. And I really was, I was absolutely and utterly terrified. And it's funny because I've always been a bit of a daredevil, but when it comes to heights, wow, that was really scary. I wasn't sure whether I felt sick. I'm not sure whether I was white, whether I was green, what I was, but my heart was absolutely racing. But I tell you what, it was one of the most exhilarating things that I've done. And the scariest things I did as well was jumping off from 15 meters. I'll let you see some pictures and you can see what it looks like. See what I'm talking about. So what is it that you're afraid of? Maybe it's heights, maybe it's public speaking, which I also used to be quite afraid of. Maybe you're scared of being a parent. Maybe you're scared because you've just become a parent. Maybe you're scared of dying. Maybe you're afraid of living, if you're really honest with yourself. Maybe you're afraid of leaving a bad situation that you're in. Maybe you're afraid of leaving a job that you're not happy in. Maybe you're afraid of illness. Maybe you're afraid of something happening to people that you care about. There's so many things that we can be afraid of. So what is the answer to fear? Well, I think what most people do is choose to avoid fear and they try and remain comfortable, but I don't think that that really works because if you live your life trying to avoid fear, then you're not really growing as a person and you're probably not filling your greatest potential. And also, if you are one of these people um, who I probably was when I was a lot younger and you basically just want to avoid anything that could make you feel afraid, um, you then kind of live with this sort of feeling of dread that even though you're taking all these steps to avoid things that can make you feel afraid or avoid things that could be bad, you're still left with this feeling of dread and that's not a very nice way to live, is it? Obviously, there are lots of different types of fears. Some of our fears are ego-based, things like rejection or fear of failure, fear of loss, that kind of thing. But then there's fear of things like dying there's fears of illness. There's fears about things that would happen if we took a certain action. It's helpful to think about what our fear is. Is it a fear of something that's gonna happen if we take action? Is it a fear of the inevitable? And if it is a fear of the inevitable, then is there any point in spending time being afraid? I suppose that we can't really be surprised that we automatically take steps to avoid fear. You don't often hear people's parents saying, go on son, take some risks today. Yeah, just do that. Give it a go, it'll be fine. More likely it's, uh, have you got this? Have you got that? Have you got the other thing? Be careful of this, be careful of that, be careful of the other. It's no wonder that we're so scared. Maybe we're telling ourselves that when this happens or when that happens or when we feel better about ourselves or when we have more confidence, then we'll take the steps that we feel that we need to take to improve our situation. The problem is that it just doesn't happen. And then it becomes a when-then game continually. When this happens, then I'll do that. When this happens, then I'll do that. And guess what? It never happens. And then we kind of get stuck in what I would call analysis paralysis, which is also not a very fun place to be. You know, it's funny because when we look at others 
I think if we look at others and especially people who we think are quite accomplished, people that we think have um, done really cool things or extraordinary things, um, maybe just regular people that we know or maybe athletes or movie stars or maybe not reality stars. Um, but yeah, we, we look at them and we think, wow, you know, it must be great to be like them and, and to be fearless. But the reality is that it doesn't matter whether you're a business tycoon, it doesn't matter whether you're a parent, it doesn't matter whether you're in any particular job, it doesn't matter whether you're young, it doesn't matter whether you're old, fear is a part of life. And the difference between people who sit and worry and be really risk averse and um, are miserable a lot of the time and those who are out there doing things is that those who are out there doing things have made the choice to accept that fear is a part of life and they've decided that they're going to move forward with fear. It's probably a good idea to listen to the fears that we have about jumping off a bridge or walking into a fire or doing something that would cause us physical harm. But apart from that, I think it's really important to examine what our relationship with fear is and decide whether it's best serving us or if it's something that we've inherited, if it's something that comes from watching too much TV, watching too much news from people around us, if it's something that's really service, serving us in our lives today and if it's something that maybe we need to change. For me personally, if I'm not feeling any fear, then I think that I'm not growing and I don't really feel alive. I felt so alive when I jumped from 15 meters after absolutely pooping myself going around the assault course, looking down at the shopping center floor. At no time was I using the safety rope. As far as my brain was concerned, if I lost my grip, or my foot in, then I was gonna to fall to sudden death and splat on the floor. So that was such an exhilarating experience, but I'm not really just talking about confronting your fears, like things that would be more like phobias, like phobia of spiders or, or something like that. What I'm talking is, is about, what I'm talking about is the everyday fears that we have in life, fear of making change, fear of making an investment, fear of trying something new fear of changing a job, fear of leaving a relationship, the kind of things that confront us every day and that we're scared to tackle too much of the time. But what if this happens? But what if that happens? But what about this? But what about that? What if it doesn't work out? What if you fail? You're not good enough to do that. No chance you're gonna manage that. Yeah, really? You think you can do that? Hmm. I think you should try something a bit more simple. If you leave that relationship, no one else is gonna want you. Blah, 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 blah. At the end of the day, we all have a negative voice in our head. And, and sadly, the thing that you find as well is if you decide to make a change in your life and especially a big change in your life the negative voice isn't just one inside your head often the people that are closest to you and whose support you could most use also become an outward negative voice telling you that oh i don't know but you've you failed at this before or i'm not sure if you can manage that or but what if something goes wrong or what this what that what the other and that is not what you need you know if Firstly, you have to learn to deal with a negative voice inside your head. At the end of the day, we all have a higher self and we can all choose to tap into that higher self and we can all choose to take steps of faith, courage, whatever terminology you use, whether you're religious or not. At the end of the day, we can choose to ignore our neg negative voice. And also sometimes, you know, if you're really wanting to move forward, if you really want to make a big change in your life, sometimes it, may, it means making difficult choices about the people who are closest to you. Sometimes that can be close friends, sometimes that can be family, and sometimes it can be a partner. At the end of the day, if somebody really loves you and they really care about you, then what they want is to see you thrive and they want to see you be the very best version of yourself and to be the best person that you can be. 
And it's people like that that you need around you, people that have also decided that they're not gonna live fearful lives and that they want to be the very best that they can be. So what's the answer to fear? Well, I think that the answer to fear is to reframe the way that we look at it. And personally, I would see fear as a positive indicator that I'm moving forward. If I'm not feeling afraid, then I'm probably stuck. And if I'm not happy, then I really need to get some fear on the go. I really need to do something. I need to take some steps that are gonna make me afraid because at the end of them, I know that there is growth. There's absolutely no point in wasting time being afraid of what we cannot change. And it's so simple and we all know this, but how often do we forget it? For me, the answer to fear is to simply believe, and I say simply, it's not necessarily simple, but it kind of is. Simply believe with everything that you have that no matter what happens, you're going to find a way through. You don't need all the answers before you start doing something. The chances are you never will have all the answers. The likelihood of having all the answers and knowing exactly how things are going to pan out before you take a step of faith it's very, very unlikely. So for most people, that means that they don't move forward. And unfortunately, that applies to lots of institutions as well. Your journey of adventure does not start when you stop being afraid. It starts when you decide that you're gonna go for it regardless of the fact that you feel afraid. When you decide that you're gonna have the confidence in yourself that no matter what happens, you, you can find a way through. And the first step in this is to win the battle for your own mind, to learn to stop listening to your negative voice. And you know, when you hear your negative voice saying, you've never done that before, you can't do that. You know, just retaliate by saying, just because I haven't done something, doesn't mean I can't. For goodness sake, do not be a victim because victims are powerless. The best thing to do is take radical responsibility for everything in your life whether you think it's your fault or not. And that might seem like a hard pill to swallow, but if you take radical responsibility for everything in your life, then you have a real power, a real sense of power, an actual power over your life. Whereas if you constantly blame other people for your situation, for being the reason that you can't change, you can't do this, you can't do that, then you're powerless. You're just stuck in misery because you're projecting onto everything onto other people and they're not gonna change your life for you. It's always important to remember as well that there is no such thing as failure. Sometimes you'll find out how not to do something before you find out how to do it, but that's just part of the process. It's not a failure. I'm gonna leave you with a question that I'm also kind of gonna answer for you. What would you be doing if you didn't have any fear? I would bet a lot more money than I have right now that you would be feeling alive. You'd be feeling excited, enthusiastic, motivated, that you'd be feeling more loving and also that you'd be feeling more powerful. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video and thank you if you've already subscribed to my channel. If you haven't already, then please ignore the negative voice in your head that says, oh, I'll do it later or oh, no just subscribe to my channel. If you find this helpful, it would really be helpful to me. And also if you're feeling really kind, then share it as well. And remember, if you do subscribe to my channel and share it before the end of November, it could be you who I'm delivering 500 pounds in cash to on the 1st of December. And remember, just because you haven't done something doesn't mean you can't. One more thing, if you'd like to support me in making these videos, it's greatly appreciated if you want to, and if you can, there are links on my website which should be popping up below. And you will find links to my Patreon page where you can make a monthly subscription and also to my Starling page where you can make a one-off donation.